hand in a robot, and the robot completely freaks out the guy who's taking the hostages. He throws down his gun and comes out. And what do you think is, that's good. You know, it's doing good. None of the SWAT team get killed. It saved the hostages. And this is all very well. But if you just plot it a little bit into the future, what the police can now do, and wh when they draw the line as to what they use it for, you know, I'm waiting to sort of throw some gum in the street in England, and suddenly one of these security cameras tasers me. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, if you ever, you know, it, it calls to mind, if you ever remember the, the movie RoboCop, where yes, the first time they, they well. test the ED-209, the guy throws the gun down on the ground, and the ED-209 goes, put down your weapon, and then sits there and machine guns him in front of the entire boardroom because it malfunctions and thinks that he still has the gun in his hand. It's a very good, it's a very good analogy, actually. It's much better than the Terminator because... Ed was a really sort of stupid robot, unlike RoboCop. Exactly. That's, kind of, that's exactly the kind of robots. But with these fleets of, you know, you imagine autonomous jets, right? So they start dogfights with autonomous jets in the air. No pilot's going to get hurt. But these things are shooting at each other, and what's going to happen when they go out of control? Because you put, you put a rocket through the radio communications, and the thing's going to come crashing down into people's houses. You know, it's all very dangerous. And it's like, sometimes I think, some of the military planners, it's like big kids with toys, isn't it? No, exactly. Well, one of the questions, have you ever heard of fourth generation warfare? Have you ever read about that? No, I haven't, no. Um, no. It's, it's the idea that now as we're, we're moving faster and faster into like the technological revolution, I mean, is that, um, you know, nation states originally only had the capacity to field the armament and the technology and the destructive capability but now we're moving into a new era where it's becoming much more decentralized again and you have you know terrorist organizations corporations you know all of these these nodes that now possess the same kind of technology and destructive capability that governments do so the the question is is what happens when this technology is abused by either those you know with agendas that are contrary to the public well um, um yeah, exactly. But the, but the, the the idea of the terrorist organisation, there's another. There's, I'm glad you mentioned that because there's another very important point here, and um, it's got to do with you know sending our lads out and getting them, you know, saving them with robots. There's a there's a philosopher in the United States called uh, Paul Kahn who's written a paper about what he calls riskless warfare, and he's talking about the robot warfare. So that you know you you're sending these either remote control jets out or autonomous jets, autonomous vehicles, autonomous weapons out to fight for you. And so it's a risk-free war. There are no personnel from the United States that will be killed or from the United Kingdom or any of the allies. But what you're doing in this case is the people in these countries have no resort now but to attack your civilians. So now what you're doing by having a risk-free war is you're setting your civilians up so the United States people won't be able to travel anywhere in the world. That's it, really interesting. I had never even considered that aspect of it, but I, I think Of course, they have to fight back somehow. This is why we have terrorism, because, you know, how can anybody, you know, you could, you could, we're so overpowering countries now that they can't fight back, because the only thing they can do, and I'm not, I'm not condoning terrorism at all or extremist groups, but you push people into a corner, that's, that's the only recourse they have left to them, is to attack your civilian population. Well, it's interesting you should say that. I mean, I make no excuse for, for, t for any kind of terrorism, and I know you don't either, but uh, there was a quote I read recently that, that sums up that thought, I think, pretty well. It's that uh, war, war is, um, uh, is politics carried out by other means. Terrorism is war carried out by other means. It is, it is yes. The w one thing about war is that, you know, in the West we've always had this kind of, uh, well, Big nations have these agreements, like the you know Geneva Convention, the Hague Convention, all the protocols and treaties, and they at least on on paper pay or pay lip service perhaps, but they at least they have some sort of order. That's the just war order. So armies, I mean, the idea was that armies face each other in a battlefield. They don't harm civilians and they fight each other. But a lot of that went out of the window in the war with obliteration bombing. They didn't defend killing innocents. Uh, people tried to say that anybody in, in Germany, for instance, was helping the war effort. So all civilians were helping the war effort, and they were fair game. But you can't call a six-month-old baby living in an urban population fair game. So it kind of went out the window there a bit. But they still try and have treaties, though the United States keep pulling out of them, you know, anti-ballistic missiles, etc. And uh, preemptive war is the new thing now. So you attack Iraq because it might have 
uh, weapons of destruction, even though it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But you've you've kind of got these rules set up, and and the terrorists or the extremist groups are really warriors who don't obey the rules of just war, really. And I'm not sure that the other thing, going back to the risk-free war, one of the points of that is, are we really obeying the rules of just war now? Because if there's no danger to us whatsoever, how, how is that a just war? We're just killing people. I mean, you're just picking them off. It's a kind of murder, isn't it? No, I... You call, I... That, you call that then a policing operation. But in my book, policing operation doesn't accept collateral damage. When the police go to surround a building because there's somebody holding hostages, they don't blow it to pieces and say, well, it was military advantage was greater than the number of people we killed. No, I mean, I agree. I mean, one of the other questions that I, that I wonder about is one of the biggest and most overused tactics by political establishments and military establishments throughout history has been false flag attacks, you know, basically carrying out an attack by an enemy um, or carrying out an attack and pretending or making it look like it was your enemy. What happens when we're just dealing with robotic systems and we've completely moved, removed the human oversight element how do we even know who's attacking us and for what purpose anymore? Well, that, that's true, but the, I mean, right, now, g g being, being a little bit helpful here, I have talked to, I, I do talk to your military here. I mean, I, I get inside the military and talk to people because I want to know what's going on and offer advice about artificial intelligence uh, in the sense of explaining what the limitations are. And, you know, you've got... They're not all bad people in your military. There's, there's a lot of good people. I mean, the, the, it's essentially the politicians who send them off to fight. Their job's to go out and fight and kill and defend your country. And there are people in there who are, who are saying things like they really want to put a lot of... The people who are building these robots, especially the engineers, are saying they want to put a lot of constraints on it so they've got logs, so that if you interfere with the robot at all, it will record who interfered with it. You know, you have to type in a password... Uh, if you want to switch off its constraints and send it to do something you don't want to do, you'd have to type in a password so it would be known who it was. But what if you just blow it to pieces? Exactly. Well, and I mean, it's kind of like so the, the, the... Send it in, then blow it to pieces. Now, there's no record, there's no log. Wipe the hard drive, you know, so it's doable. Exactly, exactly. Um, so it to, malfunctioned. To go, to go with the military vein, I mean, really, what, what is their reaction to your warning? I mean, are they paying lip service to it, or do you really feel like they understand the complications and the slippery... A lot, a lot of the, the top brass people that I talk to, like admirals or generals or something, very intelligent people, and, you know, they, they're not paying lip service to it. They're listening. Uh, it, the people that, that are harder to reach... Are the uh, you know the people who are making these weapons? Literally, the developers and, and everyone else. Salesmen, you know, the salesmen. They're out there pitching. They're explaining. As I say, you know, how how can if you're a military commander though, and you have something at your disposal to save the lives of your men, it's your moral duty to do so. So if you put it into these people's hands, and you change, you make the law so that they can use them, then they will. Well, you know, this morning I was doing some last-minute research, and a new article popped up about a uh, Atlanta bar owner here in the states that has built his own robot with a camera mounted on it that patrols his neighborhood for drug dealers. <laughs> and it's this—it's this little black armored, you know, robot on treads with a single red eye and a camera on its head that just rolls around his. His neighborhood. So, I mean, we're already seeing the diffusion of this technology into the general public, not even, not just even from the police and military standpoint that we already know about, but literally the public. But how does the law stand on that? Um, Can you do that? It's a public sidewalk, so basically here in the States, if you're on a public sidewalk, you can record anything that you want. 